you're not good enough at ultrasound, that's not an excuse to punish your patients with radiation. Get out there, ultrasounds, hearts, lungs, my VCs, let us know how you feel about it. He you know, got his wrist pain by, by doing over aggressive high fives to his buddies. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the Ultrasound Podcast. It is 5.38 in the morning, and I've got nothing better to do than teach you about diastolic dysfunction. So we're going to do a little live education session here. I've got uh, one of the residents here at the University of Utah, Utah helping me out, Phil Craven, and uh, we're going to get after it. Okay, it's going. All right, so here we go. So we're going to get started looking for the apical four-chamber window here on Phil's chest, just going right below the nipple. Um, and I usually take the probe marker, point it towards the back of the left axilla or either down to the bed. And when I do that, you usually have to move around a little bit, find the right inner space. So here we see we're getting part of the four-chamber view here. There's sort of left ventricle right here, part of the right ventricle, and then I kind of see the atria. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of flatten the probe down and rotate the probe towards the bed. Usually that clockwise rotation and flattening the probe down will really improve my view so that I can see all four chambers here. So now we see left ventricle here, right ventricle, left atrium, right atrium there. And then we'll just sort of play around here until we can get the view optimized. Sometimes you might even need to go down to a different inner space. So here I've actually gone down in your space and see the views a lot better now and I can see more of what I'm more of what I'm looking for. And there's that inflow of that mitral valve really, really good right there. Okay, can you come around and decide? Mm -hmm. So now that we've optimized our four chamber view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the pulse wave button and I'm going to put the pulse wave gate right to the very tips of the mitral valve leaflets. I'll hit pulse wave again. And once I fix my baseline and my scale, you want your scale to about 100. Get an image that looks something like this. And what we've got here is we've got uh, the E wave here and the A wave down here. I'm just going to scroll over to sort of a better view. So here's a good example of the two. And what we can do is we can measure the E-wave velocity here. And his E-wave velocity is 71.9. And if we wanted, we can measure the A-wave velocity too, which would be right here. And that's 34.07 centimeters per second. So this is a normal inflow pattern where the E is greater than the A, but the E is not super huge. You can see it's less than 100. So then the next step is to look at the TDI, because I don't know whether this is normal or pseudonormal. So if I do tissue Doppler imaging, what I'll do is I'll hit the pulse wave again, but now I'm going to put the gate over the annulus, because I'm looking at tissue velocities, and I'll hit pulse wave a second time. I need to just basically turn down my gain, change my baseline, because now I'm looking below, and I want to change my scale to about 20, because most, most of the E-prime velocities are less than 20. So here we have an E prime velocity here. This is E prime, A prime, E prime, A prime. If I measure the E prime there, I'm measuring it's 17.6. So looking back at Phil's inflow velocities, his inflow velocity was, what, 75? Is that what it said, Phil? Yeah, 71. And his E prime velocity. was 17. So the E over E prime would give me an estimate of his pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. So Phil's got normal filling pressures and normal diastolic dysfunction. If you're not good enough at ultrasound, that's not an excuse to punish your patients with radiation. Get out there, ultrasounds, hearts, lungs, my VCs, let us know how you feel about it.